everyone, welcome back to another Starbelt Video Portal episode. I haven't been making as many movies lately because I have been practicing some exciting new stuff. It's very time consuming and the learning curve is huge, I hope to show it to you soon. First of all, I should say I'm using Final Cut Pro. I just upgraded to 10.5.2, there was a new update yesterday. Sometimes I want to do some interesting generator effects, and there are some built-in generators in Final Cut Pro. There's a couple of 360 ones. There's some backgrounds, some elements, some solids, and some textures. Now these are pretty interesting all by themselves, but if you happen to have motion, and if you don't, I highly recommend that you acquire it. I think it's only $50. And the version of motion I'll be showing you today is motion 5.5.1. There are a lot more effects and generators that you can find within motion that are not available to you within Final Cut. However, I have good news. It is possible to create a Final Cut generator using the built-in generators within Motion. So I'll show you how. We're going to make a new Motion project. We're going to call it a Final Cut generator, this one. Broadcast uh, safe 1080p. I like that. I'm going to move that to 30 FPS because pretty much everything I do is 30 FPS. I'm going to make it five seconds. I don't think it matters for a generator. And then we're going to click open. And you get this screen. And what you can do is under the library, you can go to generators. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here. I am just scratching the surface. Um, I've been like, there's really cool generators. You get a little preview up there. But for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a particularly interesting generator that I found. In fact, it's not a generator that I'm going to export as a generator today, but it's a particle emitter. And there's all kinds of cool particle emitters, as you can see. And wouldn't it be cool if you could do that right within Final Cut? instead of having to come out here to render it and then bring it in with some loss. It turns out you can. So the one I'm going to show you today is a complicated one called Dataflow. You can see a little preview right there. It's got like matrix style green letters going in three directions. So select that, drag it over here to your project, and now you'll see Dataflow as well as some other things that it created. And here's our initial preview. So what you want to do is you want to go to the Inspector tab and look at all these parameters that you can tune up. For example, if I hit play on this, you can kind of see how it grows. And you can make it a circle, you can make it a burst, you can make it a rectangle. You get the idea. You can change its radius. You can change the number of points. All these things you can configure. So let's just reset everything because I want, want it at its defaults. So what you want to do is you want to go to the very far right of each parameter that you want to export as part of your new generator that will show up under Final Cut Pro. You'll get this little drop down arrow if it's available and not all of them are. And what you can do is go down here to publish. And there might be a way to do all of them at once that I don't know about. Some of them are a bit janky like that one took a second or two to show up. Just sort of like think happy thoughts and try not to miss one. Try to get them in the same order that you see them here. Otherwise, if you publish them in a different order, those controls will show up in a different order in Funnel Cut Pro, which if you're like me, that'll irritate you. 
having the same filter work differently in two different softwares. I like to keep things consistent so that I can work faster. So here we are with a parameter that we're not going to be able to publish, which is kind of too bad, but if I really want to play with color over life, I guess I'm just going to have to do it in motion anyway. So there'll be some parameters for some filters you select that just aren't going to be publishable. Okay, so now that I've done all that, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to File, you want to go to Save As, and you're going to be creating a new template. So I'm going to give it the same name. I'm going to call it Data Flow. And then you can make a category or add it to an existing one. I'm going to start making my own category of filters and I'm going to give it a name Starbelt. So let's create that. Um, I don't really have a theme in mind right now. I, I don't have any unused media that I'm going to include, but I am going to save a preview movie, then hit publish, and you saw something happen there really fast. Maybe I'll try and freeze frame that and edit. But what it did is it saved this template, and it should be on your main Macintosh hard drive. It's usually called that unless you change the name. It'll be under Users, Your Username, Movies, Motion Templates. Oh, okay, it takes it a little while to share. So I wasn't seeing it here, and I'm like, what did I do wrong? It, it took it about a good minute to actually publish that. So let's go back again So to your Macintosh hard drive users, your username, uh, movies, motion templates, generators, and now under generators you'll see the name that I gave for the category which is Starbelt and underneath Starbelt is Dataflow and then here's all the items that in it included as part of that template. So then what you can do is you can go back to Final Cut Pro and here's a cool tip um, you don't even need to restart Funnel Cut Pro anymore to see it happen. If you don't see it right away, I do. But if you don't, just click over on, on one of the other icons and then go back to the text or titles and generators. And then you'll find your new category that you created, in this case Starbelt, and you'll see the new generator. So then we can throw it into the timeline. Let's let it render real quick. And with the default settings, kind of does that, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool to have that generator right inside Final Cut Pro. But all those published parameters that we tediously went through and published each one, you have them here right within Final Cut. So you can like, change the parameters right here. Let's go back to circle for this one. Um, yeah, you've got all of these parameters right here. You can even tune up the radius. And the keyframe, the keyframes are here too. So for instance, if I want to undo that and let's say, let's Oh, it's, it's black, so it's hard for me to see the first frame, but let's pretend that's first frame. And then if I wanted to add a keyframe there, and then get to the last frame, and add a keyframe there, and turn up my radius kind of like that. And we don't have to let it render, but it, sure, it certainly plays a bit better if I do. Okay, there we go. You can see that you can add keyframes to the filter even to give it a bit of life, even though you're not in motion right now. So there you go. Um, I could spend all afternoon playing with these parameters. Before doing any of my composite tricks, it's a very powerful way to bring some of the features within motion into Final Cut Pro. Let's do one more for the purposes of this video. 
So again, we'll go back into motion. We'll create a new project, a Final Cut generator, 1080p, 30 FPS, five seconds. It turns out, yeah, if you want the preview movie and the filter to be about five seconds, make it about five seconds here. It's a good size. Uh, you can stretch that in your timeline. So for example, just to segue on you, because I made it five seconds, the default one was five seconds, but you can certainly like extend that if you want to. All right, that said, I'm gonna make it five seconds, keeps the file sizes small, speeds up the export time. So a Final Cut generator, let's open it. And there's another generator I saw, this Aurora one. I want that in Final Cut Pro too. So it looks a little more complicated. Let's take a look at it. I think the parent is this, so let's inspect it. And again, we've got lots of publishable parameters, except we're probably not going to be able to do the color range. So if you really want to play with the color range, you're going to have to do it within motion. But let's grab this anyway, or as much of it as we can. So once again, we'll publish these patiently and in the correct order. And not publishing duplicates, not missing one. Kind of hard not to go cross-eyed, though. I'm not talking because I'm concentrating here. Don't even want to blink or I might miss one. Okay, I can't do that color range, sadly. Or can I? Oh, it's taking a very long time to come up. No. Let's get these down here. I think this one has even more controls than that last one. All right, go to File, Save As. We're gonna call this one the same name, Aurora. We're gonna put it in my category star belt. We're going to save the preview movie, publish. This time we'll be patient. I noticed there's this little dial box down here. There we go. If you click it, you can see the status here. And the status appears to be a 0 to 100, but oh, there we go. It does take it a little while to export this, so be patient. OK, once you see this message, you can even hit that show box there and then you don't have to drill in, but I'll show you where it is again. You'll find this on, let's just pretend that we're doing it from scratch. So let's go back to the desktop. Whoop, whoop, get out of here. Open up your main hard drive, go under users, your username, uh, movies, motion templates, generators, and Starbelt is now growing, I have two generator effects. And this is what Aurora exported. Out of curiosity, how big are these? Half a meg, not bad. And now if I go back into Final Cut Pro and take a look at my generators, we'll see that Aurora is listed there. So let's see how it works. Grab a copy, throw it in the timeline. All oh, right, I made this guy huge, didn't I? I uh, will let it render itself real quick. You don't have to, you can actually play it without rendering it, but it's a little choppy sometimes. So if I click on that, here's all the published parameters I was able to bring in. Very cool stuff. And once again, 
I could probably play with this for a while. Let's see what it does. I'm not going to render it, but yeah, you can see it gets a bit choppy if it isn't rendered, but that's actually quite nice looking. And then you can do the normal things, like if you look at it in clip mode, if you thought maybe you were disappointed that it didn't take up the whole screen, you can do something like that. You can distort it, bring it down a bit. You can even do things like rotate it. Like, for example, a real cheap uh, thing we can do. Now we can see our beginning keyframe because we've actually got some contrast there. But a fun trick is to set a keyframe for rotation, another keyframe for rotation, and then, like, say 180, let's just flip it. And now you've got the sense that your spaceship tumbling towards some plasma sheath. There you go. Two particle emitters slash generators that you can export out of motion and manipulate right within Final Cut. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. If you want to see me try to do something else or if you have any questions about this, just ask me in the comments. I try to respond to everyone. Thanks for watching. Look forward to talking to you next time. Bye bye now.